today we're gonna show you Gideon's Cave and Gideon's Spring. Wow, I'm so excited. Are you excited? I am excited. It is an incredible place with an incredible story. This is the place where Gideon had victory over 135,000 troops. Wow, do you see this? That's Givata More, and that's where the enemy army was, and Gideon and his soldiers up here, and then they would go down into the spring to drink. I mean, there were only 300 men against 135,000 men. Seems impossible, yet Gideon had the victory. Imagine 135,000 troops right in front of you, right there. It's scary. And you're what, 300? <laughs> Don't take the steps. So we're gonna show you the location, the water, and the topography of the event that took place with Gideon and his 300 men. And as a bonus, we're gonna share with you something about this water that is so fascinating. I mean, when we found out, our mind was just blown away. So stay tuned. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah. Wow, so this is cool. When was the last time you've been here? I remember being here as a child and that's it. Wow. So I don't remember the place very well. Wow. So excited. Are you excited? I am excited. Cool. There's a shaded spot right there. All right, let's park right there. Wow, we're here. So exciting. Wow. Look up there. Oh, it's beautiful. I love to wake up in the morning, but keep dreaming without wording. The day is gone. So Rhoda was here when she was a little girl. We've got to find pictures of that. <laughs> the river. You remember the river? I do. Hey, look at those trees. Look, they have those cotton pom-pom things and then spikes all the way through. It really hurts, like you don't wanna. I just wanna lie in the sun. Oh, I see the cave. You see the cave? I do. Whoa. Hey, there's another one up there. Yeah, this is so cool. What happened at these very waters is absolutely fascinating, isn't it? Miraculous. Yeah. And it's incredible. Yeah. It's described in the book of Judges, chapter 7, and it's centered around a man named Gideon. You most likely know this story, but in case you don't, here is a quick 60-second recap. The book of Judges, chapter 6, tells us that the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord. And so God had given them into the hands of their old enemy, the Midianites, the Amalekites, and a few other peoples of the East. So the Israelites lived under heavy oppression. But after seven years, when the people cried out to the Lord, God promises to deliver them from their enemy. And so he chooses a man by the name Gideon to lead an army that will defeat the Midianites. Gideon, despite being terrified, listens to God's calling and summons an army of 32,000 Israelites. But God tells Gideon, you have too many men because if they win, the people will boast against the Lord and claim victory by their own strength, forgetting to give the glory to God. So how does God make this army smaller? He tells them anyone who trembles with fear may turn back and leave, and 22,000 men go home. So Gideon is left with a little army of 10,000. But that's not the end of the story. Then God tells Gideon, well, that's still too many. Yes, 10,000 is still too many to go with the war. So what he tells Gideon to do, he tells take the men to the stream of Harod and have the men be tested how they're gonna drink the water. Mm -hmm. And so Gideon and his 10,000 men are up on that mountain, come down to this very stream. And here is what happens next. What happens? Some guys go into the water kneel down and suck right into the water. While the other group of guys do this. Mm -hmm. 
And so the guys that drank like this from their hands were 300 guys and the rest were sent home. And that is fascinating. Now Gideon is left with 300 men to go against an army of 135,000 men. That is an odds of one to 450. One Israelite against 450 enemies. That's insane. And what happens next? God puts fear into the Amalekites army and, and they are completely afraid of Gideon and God gives the victory to Gideon and his small army. And the way God gives them the victory is awesome. God splits the Gideon 300 men into three groups and he gives them torches, trumpets and pitchers. They break the pitchers of the bases and they blow the trumpets and the military of the Midianites get scared thinking there is a giant force surrounding them and they run away and then they fight each other because they're from different cultures, different grounds. There's Amalekites, Midianites and they don't know who is who, they fight and it's a one big chaos. Gideon wins, Israel wins, they capture the kings, a huge deliverance. It's unbelievable. It's quite a remarkable story, really it is. If you still haven't read it, you gotta read Judges chapter 7. Unbelievable. It's a quite remarkable. You know how you drank from the water there? Yeah. And it comes from this one. Yeah. There's dead bird and poop from the pigeons, like all over. Dead bird. You drank that. Yeah, I'm sure you'll be okay. You know what really interests me is what? how did Gideon feel? What did he see when you saw the Midianites and the enemies mm. up across the field? Because from here you can't really see no, across the field. But they didn't stay here. They mm. actually stayed up that mountain, hill. Yeah. On the mountain. So if Gideon and his men were up on the mountain, what did they see? Could they see the enemy? You want to check it out? I've never been up there. It's a lot of stairs. <laughs> Let's do it. A lot of stairs. Let's do it. Don't take the steps. Wow. Wow, do you see this? This is it. So that's Kivat Amore, and that's where the enemy army was. And they would be settled all over there in the valley. And this reservoir wouldn't have been here because that's man-made. And Gideon and his soldiers up here on the, on the mountain of Gilboa. Imagine 135,000 troops right in front of you, right there. It's scary. And you're what, 300? <laughs> These guys probably... It's scary. This is the first time I ever went on top of this hill yeah, me too. of Ein Harod and I've never imagined Givat Amor to be so close. I knew always where it is. I didn't think that visually it is so yeah. close. It is very close. I didn't imagine it would be so close either. <laughs> no wonder Gideon was afraid and God had him go down to the camp, down to the troops to hear them talk about the, the dream. dream. So yeah. he got encouraged and said, okay, God is delivering us. Because yeah. it just seems not just impossible, it just seems impossible yeah impossible is there a bigger the word than impossible I don't think so if there is a bigger word than impossible that that's not. what it is yeah. so in the beginning of this video we told you that we're gonna share something interesting about this water and here it is the source of this water where it bubbles up right there under the mountain comes from inside the mountain but where does it originate from Apparently, it originates from the hometown of Gideon. Wait, what? Let's head to Wikipedia. In the Harod Spring page, under the Geography section, it actually states the source of the spring comes from fresh rainwater that percolate into the limestone hills of Samaria and collect in an underwater reservoir beneath the areas of the cities of Nablus and Jenin. And according to Charles Foster Kent, Gideon's hometown of Ra is in the same area. Then the water inclined north towards the valleys and emerges from a natural cave known as Gideon's Cave. 
Isn't that incredible? It, this water comes from Gideon's hometown. It ends up here. That is so cool. Cool indeed. And what's even cooler is the photo we found on Wikipedia of this spring from over 100 years ago. Both Rhoda and I were shocked to see how much larger the pool of water was, as it really helps you imagine the 10,000 men lapping for water. And another striking detail we found in this photo is the bare hills of the Gilboa mountain. There is not a single tree, which means all the trees you see in the park today must be new. Wow, this place is so, so beautiful, isn't it? It's just... It is such a cool place. If you guys find yourselves in Israel, you should check this place out. I mean, just take a day to relax, enjoy the waters and have a picnic or whatever, but it's a beautiful place to come to and enjoy. Absolutely. Wow. Well, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, like the video and subscribe below. And we'll see you next time, Lord willing. Wait, you didn't swim. Oh. Are you gonna swim? Oh. Well, it was kind of cold. Yeah. Really cold, yeah. and there's that dead bird over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shut up. Yeah. I don't recommend. <laughs> <laughs>